um, my main standing. And I would like to also, before I pray, have a moment of silence for the student that we lost during spring break. You bow your heads for a moment. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty One, we ask if you would bless this ceremony today as we honor two of your humble servants, Ernest Boy and Folletta, Folletta, excuse me, Brown Collins. These individuals have sacrificed their time, their talents, and tangible resources to make Prairie Review and University an institution of the first class. And for that, we say thank you. Allow each individual who may enter these sacred doors to feel the spirit of Panther Pride and the everlasting commitment to the values we cherish in research, teaching, and service. Collectively, we are grateful to bestow this honor on two that have placed Prairie View a and University across their hearts. Continue to bless their work for Prairie View and its mission. In the season of Lent, let us all say amen. amen. Thank you, Marissa and Dean Luter. Now we'll have greetings from Dr. George C. Wright, President of Purdue a and University, Mr. Philip Ray, Vice Chancellor for Business Affairs of the Texas a and University System, followed by an occasion from Mr. Jacobin Dudley, the President of the Student Government Association. Good afternoon. Um, very thankful to see all of you out. Um, again, I appreciate all of those who are sitting here under the tent and especially all of those of you who are much further away. We've had many wonderful occasions over the last 15 years where we've dedicated new buildings or had a program in honor of a naming opportunity to someone and this is yet another one. Very excited about this occasion. Uh, every time that we do something like this, I always like to make a statement or two about the building of uh, the place that's being opened. Well, I asked our staff to give me some information on it, and I hope you will take the tour this afternoon because I cannot do justice to all of the things that this building has. A uh, state of the arts in both architecture and in business. Uh, there are so many unique features uh, smart rooms, all sorts of con computer activities and the like. And then some very specific things that people do in, in agriculture and then the same in business. So I hope you will all do that. Uh, it is indeed a pleasure for me to bring greetings to so many here today. Uh, special greetings to members of the Collins family. Uh, I suspect they will recognize you at some point. Uh, special greetings that Ernie Collins is a member of the Prairie View Foundation, so I know there are a number of foundation members here. Again, we always appreciate your support at various programs and other activities. Very uh, special greetings to all of our Prairie View alumni and friends who are here today. And of course, I would also like to take this special privilege to recognize my family who is here with me. My father-in-law, Wim Ellison, is here with me. And of course, our First Lady, Valerie Wright, is here. Uh, my wife uh, uh, tries to go to, very, to almost every program I do. And recently, she had some hardship service. We were uh, on an international trip representing Prairie View and she broke her foot and that has not stopped her nevertheless from doing things and so especially do I appreciate her being here along with me today. I have had the privilege uh, for the 14 plus years that I've been here to interact with Flo and Ernie Collins. First of all, uh, Flo and I are both are both teachers and so on numerous occasions we've talked about that and I know the incredible contribution she made over the decades that she was involved as a teacher. That's a very, very important contribution. I can't think of any profession more noble or more important to society than someone being a teacher. Uh, when I arrived here, Ernie Collins was already involved in fundraising activities he would contribute himself on numerous occasions and then as an employee of Shell, first as an employee and then as a retiree from Shell, 
Uh, he not only, did I say shit? I apologize. <laughs> of one of the oil companies in the area. Okay. Uh, one of the oil companies in the area, Exxon, okay, Mobile, okay, founded in, okay, all right, Humble, Texas. All right. Over the years, he not only made contributions through his employer, but he encouraged others to do that so we would get a three to one match. If you gave $25,000, that would end up being a $1,000 gift for the university. And so this is very, very important to the university. A uh, three to one match uh, that we would receive in that regard. I'm also very uh, proud of, very appreciative of the fact that he works with the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo and for all of those years, he made sure that Prairie View students, dozens of them each year, receive scholarships uh, from the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo that would help them with their education. And then about four years ago, he was very instrumental in us receiving on three occasions $100,000 in addition to that. Those funds then were used to fund Black History Month on two occasions as well as a relationship we have with various school districts and bringing other students to, to this institution. I also recall that every year he opens, they open up their ranch uh, uh, to where hunting is allowed there, and some of the proceeds from that have benefited this university. So we, have, we owe a great debt uh, to the Collinses, and I think it's very appropriate then that they are named for an auditorium that combines both business and agriculture. So again, uh, I thank all of you for being here today. This is a very special day, and I thank the Collins and the Collins family for all that you've done for Prairie View A&M University. Well, good afternoon. And let me tell you, young lady, Marissa, you are so talented. You have such God-given ability. My goodness, you are blessed. That was awesome. I wish I could do half of that. I mean, that's, that's amazing. So, uh, my name is Philip Ray. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of this. Uh, I am bringing uh, greetings on behalf of Chancellor Sharp. And uh, so I'll apologize up front. I don't have near the jokes and, and things that, that Chancellor Sharp always has. But I do share his love of the Prairie View A&M campus. And he had some things in Austin today. Uh, legislator going on there, some, some things happening, and so he, he had to go take care of that. So he sends his sincere apologies for not being able to join you all in, in the Collins' honor today. But uh, they were going around the office saying, well, we got to send different people to different places and do these type of things. What are we going to do? They said, I wasn't in the room, but they said when it came around the Prairie View, he goes, Philip go, Philip go. <laughs> uh, yes, sir, I will. It is always a great day to be on the Hill. Uh, the other thing I share with uh, the Chancellor is there is no question this is the most beautiful campus in the entire a system. I'm not sure it's not the prettiest campus I've been on in my life. I love that. Look at, look at this. And so as I go out the door, you know, they, they send me, all right, this is his script, you know, got all these things. Now, we spend a lot of time on his scripts. Uh, I don't know that he ever makes it past the first sentence or two, but we always spend a lot of time on the scripts. So they had this, be sure you read this script. And I said... This is Prairie View. I will not be reading a script, but I'll show you that. I can handle this one. This, this comes from the heart. So I appreciate being here uh, under George Wright's leadership uh, and, and, and those before him. You have a proud legacy here. Uh, this this uh, campus is transformative, and it is in, in, it's impacting so many lives. And I think it's very appropriate, as he mentioned, for the Collins to be recognized in many, many lives that they have touched. There's no question about that. The many, many lives they're going to continue to touch. Uh, and, and, the, and just the students uh, in the future that are going to come through this amazing facility uh, and see this is just, uh, I, I'm not sure they truly understand. Uh, as, as, a, as, a, as a gentleman that's been in higher ed my entire career, I'm telling you, I'm not sure you understand how impactful uh, your leadership and your giving and your generosity and your family means to, to so many that, 
that you may never meet, uh, but, but you have been a true blessing and are a true blessing to, to us all. I would like to recognize uh, the architect on this facility, which was Overland Partners. They did a tremendous job. Uh, they've done some work for us in College Station. Our bonfire memorial is one of them I, you know, mentioned to you. Uh, they're a tremendous firm. Glenn Beck uh, was our contractor on this uh, particular project. Did a super job. My my guys at FPNC, they're at the system. You know, uh, they they did more put their heart and soul in as they always do. And so, uh, Randy and Dan and Justin, those guys, uh, I think some of them may be here today. They do a tremendous job. But uh, you know, you heard President Wright mention the state of the art facility, and it is one of the finest facilities that we have in our system. Uh, there's no question about it. But it, but it's more than that. Um, it, you know, it, it is uh, a remarkable gathering place. I mean, you look at these oaks that we built around and you look at the center point of the campus and looking out on the hill and, and it, it, it's more about a feeling of place uh, than, than necessarily just a traditional academic building. So again, I think the things that this is going to impact goes beyond the classroom. I think it goes to personal lives, friendships uh, that, that will last people a uh, uh, lifetime. So I think it's a, a wonderful uh, uh, facility in just the, the best setting that we could possibly have. Uh, the other thing I would like to say is, uh, b before we close, is just, um, again, what, what this campus means within the AM system, and, and uh, we truly, truly mean that, and, and your location, your proximity to Houston, and, 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 and going back to, you know, your founding in, in 1876, I mean, it's just a remarkable legacy. And, and something that we share your pride in and will continue to help support you, you know, in any, any way that we can. So, the, you know, and, and I'm sure there's some other speakers who are going to do a much better job than I uh, speaking to the Collins. But, you know, to me, when you have folks that, that dedicate their lives to helping others and, and donating their time and their gifts, and, you know, treasures, all the things that they do, it, it's indeed remarkable. And so, uh, you know, I'm just honored to be here today, share this day with you. Thank you all for what you're doing. You're not just a role model for Prairie View a and 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 the Panthers. I assure you, you're a role model for Aggies and, and Lions and, and uh, Buffaloes and all the ones throughout the a and system. So uh, we're going to take lessons from you all. So thank you again for let, allowing me to be here. Good afternoon. To faculty, staff, administrators, family, friends, alums, um, to the Collins family, members of the uh, Prairie View Foundation, Mr. Ray from the Texas A&M University System, we want to thank you for coming out today for the Agriculture and Business Multi-Purpose multi Classroom Building Open House and Ernest Boyd and Floretta Brown Collins Auditorium Naming Ceremony. Let's give it up for them. Mr. and Mrs. Collins are a prime example of proud Prairie View alums. Um, Mr. Collins, with his time in the military as well as the business field working with ExxonMobil, and Mrs. Collins' experience um, as an educator um, in, or, around uh, the United States, has proven that these two individuals took the necessary tools that they learned from Prairie View and University, and they took that out to change the world and not only do things for um, people around the country, but especially for the things that they're doing for the lives of students at Prairie View and University. Um, time and time again, the Collins, like many other alums, have answered the call um, whenever Prairie View calls, and that's the importance of being an alum, a proud alum. Um, I've had the pleasure of interacting with them both um, during homecoming and various other activities, and they are both so humble, so loving, and so passionate about Prairie View and the University, and I think that's one of the things that we all love about you all the most. So we thank you for that. Um, today, like I said, we're here for the namesake um, the students in the College of Business and the College of Agriculture and Human Sciences will be able to witness um, just how special the Collins are by us naming the auditorium after them, but also um, the auditorium will be a showcase for future generations of Panthers to come that we live up to the motto that Prairie View truly produces productive people. So I thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Collins, for all that you do for the university. The students, we really do appreciate for all that you do. We love you and we thank you. Thank you, Dr. Wright, Dr. Ray, and Dr. Dudley, Mr. Dudley. 
prophesied. <laughs> now we'll have remarks by Dr. James Palmer, Associate Provost and Interim Dean of the College of Agriculture and Human Sciences, followed by Dr. Manir Kudus, Associate Provost of the PBA and Northwest Houston Center and Dean of the College of Business, and Dr. Willie F. Trotty, Chairman, Naming of Buildings, Facilities, and Other Entities. Uh, greetings and welcome, uh, especially to the invited guests of the College of Agriculture and Human Sciences. I know Dr. Caduce will do the same for the College of Business. Uh, it is a pleasure to offer a few words of opening remarks for this open house. I'm reminded uh, of the Poindexter Veterinary Hospital dedication just a year ago this month, in fact, on the other side of campus. And like that event, this one is full of excitement and rightly includes a touch of thanksgiving. We are thankful for those who dreamed and planned. These include those who said it can be done and straight and fought for the funding and went straight to the coordinating board and the board of regents as well. And still others who designed this space based on the experiences that the university and colleges wanted for its students, its faculty, and its visitors, including its staff. Many unseen and perhaps even unrecognized played a, a major part in where we are now Therefore, we are not here just because of the work that was done this month or this month, but because of the work of others. While I won't mention everyone, I certainly want to thank and acknowledge the presence of Mr. and Mrs. Ernie Collins. Uh, you haven't stand, stood up yet. I, I hope you'll stand up and just turn around and everyone can applaud you one more time. Your support, as has already been said, for this university and this college has been unwavering, and we are certainly happy to see your names associated with the opening of this building, uh, or this opening ceremony. And in fact, this is a place of study, uh, forming a place for forming relationships with peers and mentors, for experimentation, and learning in labs and classrooms, and all of those things, that those those big things and those small things, right? The, the soft skills and the, the, the hard skills, if you will, that make up a university experience of the first class. This building already provides a location where students can attend organizational meetings and activities that build leadership skills. It's a setting for enhanced learning via technology and a range of learning modes. It's a place for group study, where models can be displayed on large screens for stronger interaction. With more access to technology, students have the potential to be better prepared for the job market post-graduation. While the building already does these things, it should also help us with re retention, recruitment, and graduation of strong alumni. In fact, I believe it has already played a role in the 12% growth in the college this year. So today may not be entirely like the Poindexter ceremony a year ago, but it's certainly like that one an event filled with thankfulness and excitement for all the good things to come because of a place, a building that we can now call home. Good afternoon. I want to welcome each one of you, each and every one of you who has taken time to come and be with us today, especially those guests who have traveled the distance to be with us on this uh, happy and historic occasion. On behalf of the college's business family, our students, professors, faculty, staff members, and dean's advisory board members, many of whom are here today, I'd like to thank President George C. Wright and his leadership team, Provost Felicia Nave, Dr. Bradford, uh, former Provost E. Johanna Thomas Smith, and all those who are part of this initial decision to construct this building and give it to the College of Business and the College of Agriculture and Human Science as their home. As Dr. Palmer mentioned that in a public university, this is not an easy task to line up the approvals, to get the funding, to oversee the design and construction of the new building. I want to thank my colleagues in the College of Business, faculty and staff and for doing the heavy lifting. They're the ones who are teaching, they're mentoring, research and service so that you become a great business program, deserving of a new home, like this magnificent building. This building has been a long time coming. In the 40 years plus history of the college, 
This is perhaps the second permanent home for the College of Business. I joined this college in fall of 2001 as dean, and we have been dreaming of getting our own building since then. So this is one dream come true for lots of people. In 2006, when we received our accreditation with AACSB International, which is considered the gold standard for business schools worldwide, we reviewed our campaign to get a new home for the college. The business programs had grown substantially, the faculty had grown, and so we were out of space. In fact, for a number of years, we were split in two separate buildings across the campus. As a college, with respect to technology, we feel that we have made a leap from the 20th century to the 21st century just by moving into this building. Now, what is a building and why is it so important? To an architect or an engineer or a developer, a building is just a collection of bricks and steel, glass and mortar that in the end produces a beautiful structure. They call it the built environment. Now, to an organization with a mission, such as the College of Business, a building means much more. The College of Business faculty and staff have the shared vision of educating young people so that they achieve their maximum potential as business professionals, as leaders, and productive citizens of this country. When you combine these two, when you combine a mission-driven institution with a vision, and a building of the first class is built to the specifications of the college, then magic happens. The laws of gravity no longer hold. Two plus two no longer has to equal four. We have indeed experienced some of this magic since moving to this building some 15 months ago. College went through a successful reaccreditation with AACSB International in February of 2016. We expected to do well. But this time, the team was unusually complimentary in their remarks to the president and the provost. Perhaps it was the new building. Mm -hmm. Business faculty have received a number of grants, including one to support the trading room that you're going to see, and another one to set up an innovation lab to encourage entrepreneurship on this campus. As counted by Google Scholar Index, the faculty research has increased significantly. Most importantly, and this is appropriate, our students have benefited the most. They're really enjoying this new gorgeous home. A lot of selfies have been taken and sent home. And they're really proud of the new building, which is the best building on this campus. <laughs> We've also seen a change in the student behavior. They're spending much more time studying on this campus, on this building. When you come here at 8, 8 p.m., 9 p.m., 10 p.m., you still find students here. The business students sometimes complain that they have been crowded out by the engineering students. After all, these fabulous uh, study halls and study rooms are there. Uh, <clears throat> these, uh, our students have gone to competitions and won national competitions. They just back from the Battle of the Brains contest in Austin. They took the second prize there. Uh, none, none of these things happened before. So many of these things are for the first time. We believe uh, these things are being noticed by the business world also. Thanks to Mr. Perry, we had a visit from Dell Computers in Austin. We also has a visit from, visit from JP Morgan Chase for the first time in many years. In short, we have seen success after success moving up to this building. The crown jewel of this building is the trading room. It's designed to strengthen our finance program, which adds the wow factor to the building also. With the ticker tape, there's no doubt that you are in the business building. I want to say that there is no more technology in, there's more technology in this room than in the rest of the campus put together. <laughs> now that's a joke. <laughs> but the room has 12 Bloomberg terminals, each costs about $20,000 annually. Thanks to a grant from Title III, I hope Professor Akadubi is here, these special terminals allow faculty and staff, faculty and students, to get the latest data from Wall Street and participate in national stock market competitions. So this is Wall Street Live on Prairie View NM. Very few business schools can, have, can afford even a single Bloomberg terminal. We had none before we moved to this building. The trading room has inspired the finance faculty to design new courses, to strengthen uh, the skills and competencies of our graduates, Nearly 100 students have taken advantage and earned the BMC certification, 
stands for Bloomberg Market Concept Certification. It's an eight-hour online program. Um, a stock market uh, trading competition is going on um, with a million dollars in real money, as a joke. It's about a thousand dollars, and the money was raised by the faculty, by the finance faculty. So this is digital money, but in all of these competitions, we are open to students from any college. In fact, um, in, this, in this particular competition, perhaps there are more non-business students than business students involved. I take this opportunity to thank members of the Dean's Advisory Board. Some of them are here today. Would you please stand? College of Business Dean's Advisory Board. Maybe they're standing out there. Yes. Thank you very much. They have been with the college's existence. This morning, we had the board meeting in this building. A representative, Cecil Bell, of District 3, who is a board member, sent a note of congratulations and regrets for not being able to be with us today. He wrote, while the obligations of my elected status require my physical attendance in Austin, my thoughts will be there with everyone. It remains my honor to serve as an advisory board member of the Prairie View a and University College of Business. Before I take my seat, I want to thank and congratulate Mr. and Mrs. Collins for the honor of having the name on the beautiful auditorium. It is well deserved. Thank you all very much. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. This is a beautiful day on the hill, as we often say. This is indeed a pleasure for me to talk about the Collins and this event. When a university makes a decision to place a person's name on any structure, that's a very well thought out decision. You want to have, have a person's name up there who is a person of integrity a person who represents the university well, who represents the community well, a person who anybody, anywhere, would be proud to say that person deserves this. This process requires a nomination. It also requires a thorough review by the, the committee on naming things here on this campus. And I think there's some members of that committee here. If you would, would you also stand? It is something that's taken very seriously. And just to give you an example of the integrity of this process, Mr. Collins may remember the last time I was at his ranch for the annual deer hunt. Remember I shot that eight point buck? <laughs> <laughs> he, did, he didn't confirm that. <laughs> integrity. But all jokes aside, this process is one that we are honored to bring before this group today. It's hard to imagine everything that the colleagues have done for this university. It's hard to imagine the kind of support they've generated from that deer hunt. And from all, and by talking about their alma mater in many different situations, it's very difficult to imagine the honor that it brings to us. I actually met uh, Mrs. Collins and actually knew her before I knew Mr. Collins. My, my, my older daughters attended Eisenhower High School and she was counselor and assistant principal there, I believe. And one morning I received a call asking me to come to the school. When I got there, I went to this room. They had uh, chairs in a semicircle and they had two chairs outside the circle, one for me and one for my daughter. My daughter had been at school uh, crying, they told me, for the last uh, two weeks. And she said, it was because I was pressuring her uh, to make A's. I was, I was totally, you know, taken aback. I've never pressured my kids to make A's. <laughs> but because I told her to do the best that she could, and she knew she wasn't doing that. That wasn't my fault. <laughs> that, that was her problem. <laughs> but I, I, I appreciate the way the situation was handled. 
And so I met her in a situation that could have been difficult uh, for a teenage daughter at a time like that. The name of this auditorium, the in the Ag and Business Mother Purpose Classroom, the Ernest Boyd and Loretta Brown College Auditorium is appropriate because the Collins have merged their business and education expertise with agriculture. I've often heard Mr. Collins say that he is not a rancher, even though he has a nice ranch out there. He's not a rancher. It's because I'm a businessman. And so they've actually merged the concept of what this building is all about, bringing ag and business together. And for that reason alone, I'm proud to be part of this process where we've actually scrutinized the Collins and made a decision to name the auditorium for them. I can think of no other person or persons more deserving. Thank you. Thank you. And now we'll have the introduction of honorees by Mrs. Leslie Collins Thompson, daughter, Mr. Todd Jamal Collins, son, Ms. Taylor Floretta Thompson, granddaughter, followed by the honoree response, uh, Mr. Ernest Boyd and Ms. Floretta Brown Collins, class of 1966. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Leslie Collins Thompson, and I am Floretta and I'm Miss Daughter. This is my brother Todd and my daughter Taylor. And we are here this afternoon to introduce the honorees for today. I, I have to stop and say that it is so moving to me to see all of you here and to hear just the outpouring of love and support. And they so richly deserve it, and it just means so much to our family. Thank you all for being here. We appreciate it. We have to say that we are just so proud of our parents. Um, they deserve all of this. And our family is just so, so richly blessed. And we know that none of this would be possible without God's grace and favor. And we just do not take it for granted at all. And I would first like to say that um, I personally am extremely grateful for Prairie View a and University. Um, because as I always tell my children and my nieces and my nephew, none of us would be walking this earth if it were not for this place here. <laughs> because our parents actually met here on this campus. And so if it were not for this campus, they may, their paths might not have crossed and we might not all be here. So we are grateful. <laughs> and the folklore of their meeting and their time that they spent here on this campus it really has woven through our childhood memories. We all know that our parents met at the student union. <laughs> they were there for movie night. They were here there to watch a movie. We don't, we've never seen a black like me. <laughs> and they each attended the movie night with friends of theirs who happened to be from the same hometown and introduced the two of them. And the rest, as they say, is history. <laughs> We also know that my father had a job washing pots and pans in the, school, in the student cafeteria. He was responsible for washing four pots a night. Now that might not seem like a lot, but these pots were so big that he had to climb into them and scrub them from the inside. And my son, I see him back there, he's very skeptical of this stuff. <laughs> But he washed those pots every night. He had them ready for the grits in the morning, I guess, for breakfast. And he made enough money at that job to pay his tuition. And he had spending money, had enough money to court a very special young lady that he met from El Maiden, Texas. <laughs> and the other thing that we all remember is when we were growing up, we would have these really intense, competitive card games. And we battled it out. And sometimes our brothers and I would kind of get creative with the rules, or we might have a special way that we were going to cut the cards that we learned from our friends, and my dad would glare at us and say, you can't do that. This ain't Suarez Hall. Put those cards back. <laughs> and we grew up thinking Suarez Hall meant cheating or that it was some other way of being creative with the rules. And it wasn't until years later, I think my brother was visiting friends on campus, and 
he stumbled upon the actual Suarez Hall. And he called me and said, Leslie, did you know Suarez Hall is an actual place? <laughs> I said, what? He said, yeah, it's a dorm. I said, you've got to be kidding. And we asked my dad, and he said, yeah, it was a girl's dorm where the girls were known to cheat at cards. <laughs> but in all seriousness, um, what I really came to understand from listening to my parents' memories and their regard for this place is that college shapes who you are like no other experience that you have. You enter as a child with unformed hopes and dreams, and if you choose the right institution, you leave as an adult with the tools and the foundation that you need to accomplish those dreams. And Purdue a and did that for my mom and dad. My parents were both small town farm kids from large families. My father has 10 brothers and sisters, my, my mother has 11. And prior to coming to Prairie View, their entire world probably encompassed a 50-mile radius. Prairie View and A&M was a place that gave each of them the space to blossom and discover who they were meant to be. It gave them the foundation of exposure to the best and the brightest, and a sense of possibility regarding who they were capable of becoming. My parents used the foundation Prairie View gave them and transitioned into successful careers, they raised a wonderful family. <laughs> they created a life of purpose. From them, we learned to always strive for excellence, to live fully with joy and intention, to always give back and show gratitude to those who contribute to your success. And they encouraged and gave financial support to my brothers and I so that we were able to have the opportunity to choose a college that would give us that same type of enriching and life-altering experience, and we are forever grateful for that. Throughout the years, I have watched my parents and I've often thought that they made raising a family, having a successful career, a committed marriage, giving back to and serving their community, they made it look easy. They, it seemed joyful, almost effortless. However, as I get older, I realize that there was nothing easy about it. They had a definite idea of the type of lives they wanted to live, and they sacrificed and made tough choices to get there. I think that they would both thank their parents and Prairie View and University for giving them the tools and the foundation to begin that life. So now that you have an idea of how they started, my brother is going to give you, he's going to share with you their core values. Thanks, Leslie. I'll tell you that the story about Squirts Hall is so funny to me because I play Uno with my kids all the time. And in the middle of the game, they'll say, this ain't Squirts Hall, hey. <laughs> See, I don't know what Squirts Hall is. <laughs> but it's so great to be here today for this dedication. I'll tell you, um, this dedication to me is a perfect reflection of the strength of my parents' union. Over 49 years of marriage, they loved each other, and they worked to instill in Leslie and I a value system that we should live by. And Leslie and I are working every day to still instill that exact same value system into our children. Some days it goes well, <laughs> other days it doesn't. But we are consistently trying to instill that value system. So I thought the best way to introduce my parents is really just to talk about the value system that they instilled in us. My parents value work. They value hard work. And they value smart work. And they got it honestly, working with their parents on their family's land. As has been mentioned, my dad worked with ExxonMobil for 30, 35 years. My mom is an educator and worked as an educator for 39 years. Leslie and I every day saw them get up, get professionally dressed, and go to work. We never heard them complain. They always looked at work as a blessing. And they taught us that work is a blessing. The opportunity to do something that you love for work is a blessing. They also taught us through various activities, mainly farming, 
to work. We had a ranch as, really since I was born, they bought the first farm on my birthday. And we would go to it frequently. And we would feed cows, we would fix fence, we would cut grass, we would pull nails, we, we would do all types of things, Leslie included. <laughs> Paint chairs. And we would be in the middle of the pasture at about 100, it would be about 100 degrees. Gnats would be all over us. And we'd be out there maybe a couple of hours, and I'd say, Dad, look, man, we have been out here a long time. The gnats are all over me. Let's, let's go in for a little while. Todd, just work a little bit harder, a little bit faster, and those gnats won't bother you. <laughs> all right, I'll work harder. Dad, these gnats are still all over me. Son, work a little bit harder. And after a while, I forgot about the gnats. And I'll tell you, now, as a professional, when I'm trying to accomplish something and issues arise and I have problems, I can hear my dad's voice. Son, work a little bit harder. I'll tell you something about becoming a man and having kids where you really start appreciating your dad um, in a special way. And so it's, it's always touching to me to get the opportunity to talk to him. But to continue, okay. <laughs> also, they taught us uh, to work smart. So when I was a student at Morehouse, I got to Morehouse, I was 11 in Atlanta. I was 11 in school. And my dad called me up week two. <laughs> How's school? It's good. I love it. Okay, well, good. Well, let me tell you something. You have four years. I've got you for four years. After that, you're on your own. I would suggest you go over to the Career Center and try to get an intern, internship, so you can get a job after school. And it was the first time I realized I got to become an adult. <laughs> I have to graduate. And I went down to the Career Center. And I got a job, got an internship, and wound up getting a job and having a career that allowed me to support my family. But if it weren't for that phone call, just a couple of words to set my direction, I might not have taken the actions that I needed to in the time that I needed to. My parents value education. They value not just academic education, but lifelong education. My dad worked with kids in college throughout his time with ExxonMobil working to educate the broader community. As has been mentioned, my mom is an educator. And she's the type of educator that I hope my children get to have. She's a real educator. She started learning and training here at Prairie View. But even after Prairie View, I can recall my mom spending all nighters at the dining room table working on her master's degree, and then going to work, and then going to school. My mom loved students, but she kept it 100% real. If they needed to be told something, she told them. If their parents needed to be told something, she told the parents. And oftentimes, she educated us in very non-traditional ways. I can recall a time I was running track in middle school, and I didn't perform well in a track meet. My mom picked me up and she said, well, how'd you do? I said, I didn't do well. And I gave a couple of excuses and she drove along the road. And as we got closer to home, she said, well, Todd, you know, I thought about it. And, I, and the, uh, the reason you didn't do well is because you're not in shape. You haven't been working hard enough. And she began to pull over the side of the road. And I said, she said, well, look, what you need to do is try. We are five miles from home. <laughs> get out the car and run home. I'll see you when you get there. And she left. <laughs> and I ran home. But it taught me that I can't give excuses about my performance if I haven't put in the work. And I think about that all the time. And I try to teach my kids. I haven't dropped them off just yet. <laughs> it might be coming. Also, my mom, when I was in grad school, I was in grad school and things were going well, but got busy with work and stopped going to grad school. And I was out a semester, my mom called me up. It was about 8.30 a.m. in the morning. And she said, how are things? They're going well. 
And I talked about all the things I was doing. I was living in D.C. at the time. All the things I was doing in D.C. I was loving D.C. Things are going great. Well, Tom, that's great, but let's do this. Get your tail back in school. <laughs> and it dawned on me, I do need to go back to school. And I went. Now, my parents believe in financial freedom. That is a core value that they have. They believe in ownership. They believe, as my dad would say, having your name on the dotted line. And throughout our lives, as they live their adult lives, they share with Leslie and I the path to financial freedom. When they had a financial decision they made, they didn't go in their room and have a quiet conversation. They included us in it. They talked to us about saving. They talked to us about delayed gratification. They talked to us about cash flow. They talked to us about depreciating assets. These are things we talked about as relative children. When they were making a purchase, they actually brought us to the attorney's office. We were sitting around the table at the closing. So it was less than a nice time to invest ourselves as adults. We weren't new to it. We knew what we were doing. And if we had any questions, we were able to give them a call and get good information. They value, another core value my parents, they value family. And they showed us the value of family by valuing their parents. As long back as I can remember, my parents showed me that a parent-child relationship isn't just the parent giving to the child, it's also the child providing back to the parent. They loved their parents unconditionally and they supported them any way they could, as long as I can remember. They also showed us they loved us through the most expensive thing they could ever give us, their time. My parents gave their time liberally. Every sporting event, every track meet, every school activity, every college event, post-college event, birth, they were there. My 10-year-old daughter was born in Durham, North Carolina. My wife went into labor at about 2 a.m. I called my mom, hey, we're about to have Sydney Rose Collins. I'll talk to you when she gets here. I'm in the delivery room and she knocks on the door. I don't know how she got there <laughs> in four and a half hours, but she got there with my dad in tow. And that's the kind of thing that they do. They show you that they love you. They're not big on gifts. My mom will say, I'm not giving my money to China. <laughs> but they're big on experiences. We've skied together. We've cruised together. We've been all over the world together. But I'll tell you, there's nothing, there's no place better that we, no place we'd rather be than sitting around our kitchen table just spending time together, talking, riding on the ranger at Red Hill Ranch with my dad, talking. And that's the sort of thing that we often do. The last value that they instilled in us, and Proverbs has a scripture that says, blessed is the man who finds wisdom. And I've always felt it was almost unfair because we have wisdom just in our house every day. And to this day, any life decision that I'm trying to make, I call, or text my parents, and they give me their answer. They never say, you need, oh, you need to do this. No, they just give me their perspective and let me go on about my way to make a decision. And it's the best thing in life for me to have wise counsel just a phone call away. So thank you all for being here. Mom and Dad, I love you. And my niece, Taylor, has a few words. Okay, um, I'm just going to reintroduce myself. I'm Taylor Thompson, uh, the granddaughter, Taylor Floretta Thompson, the, <laughs> the granddaughter, and I'm currently a graduating senior at Spelman College in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, but I kind of feel like I almost went to P PV because I've been here so many times. <laughs> But I like to start off by saying my grandparents are hands down two of the most influential people in my life. And they've had so many different touches on my life. Um, I can just say that from my drive to pursue a higher education, 
to make a difference in the world and also even to my interest in investing. Um, they have really influenced me and encouraged me and shared wise words and advice and have always been available to any question or any need that I ever had, even before I've even asked sometimes, <laughs> they came through. I can't look at them right now because they're so cramped. <laughs> um, so whether it's over games of dominoes or long road trips and fishing sessions, they always find the time and they always find the time for me and all of the grandchildren. I'm sure they have many stories throughout all of our years. And many of my best memories have come from the Red Hill Ranch. Um, if you, I know you've heard of it before. Um, it's our family sanctuary in Riverside, Texas. A place where literally me and my cousins are given free reign to ride on Range Rovers or go karts or fish or whatever we want. And my grandpa has one rule that controls all activities at Red Hill Ranch, which is to make good decisions. <laughs> and even though at the ranch that might mean, it might mean just don't drive the go-kart into the lake, Ross, or it might not mean um, drinking unlimited sodas, um, which usually happens. It also translates into um, kind of a universal rule in life and just making good decisions and doing the right thing. And with that combined with my granny's uh, kind of mantra of adapting and adjusting, I feel like I've really kind of had an outline of what life should be like. And it's also kind of helped me uh, plow through many obstacles that I've come across in my short college career and throughout high school. I mean, I'm pretty young compared to everyone else, but, <laughs> but <laughs> I've had a couple obstacles. Um, I personally consider them to be living legends inspiring countless people to give back to not only historically black colleges and institutions and other worthy causes, but they've always had a vision. A vision that has not only lift up, uplifted those around them, but uplifted the whole community as a whole. And today, I'm inspired, not only because I'm the granddaughter of such an exemplary couple, but because they've had such foresight to make strides in advancing the very institution that gave them their start in hopes of providing the, that same start for countless others. And I want to thank both of you for being trailblazing and amazing and setting such a high standard for not only me, but the rest of our family and everyone else um, in the community. And with that being said, I would like to introduce my grandparents, Ernest and Floretta Collins. like to share with you a bit of our life journey, as well as say thank you to those who have brought us this far. To Dr. To Dr. Ray, to Dr. Wright and his administra administrative staff, Dr. Trotty and members of the naming committee, family and friends. We are grateful beyond words for the honor of receiving the naming for this beautiful auditorium, which you will see after this program. With profound gratitude and great humility, we thank you. We want to